Welcome to the show. Welcome to Should You Quit Your Job, the only show where two comics give you terrible advice you shouldn't take. My name is Nick Giusulo. I'm Jay Clark, and today we have stand-up comedian, father, gr- godfather of Orlando comedy, <laughs> Florida's funniest, winner of Steve Harvey's comedy contest, and overall swell guy. Please put your hands together for Ken Miller, everybody. That's hey, cool. thank you for coming to the show, Thanks, man. man. I want y'all to know I did. That's not my name. I think Ross McCoy gave me the Godfather name. I could. Uh-huh. Ross McCoy gave me every nickname. Yeah. He used to call me the Phenom. Okay. Because I was like, I, I, when I was a young comic, I used to bury the headliners. And so they used to call me the feline, the headliner killer. Uh, and then all of a sudden he started calling me the Godfather and yeah. it just kind of stuck. And so I became the Godfather. Cause right. I mean, you got to think Dean Napolitano yeah. should be the Godfather. He's been here right. longer. James John, Pedro yeah. Lima, Pat Garrity, yeah, yeah. all those guys have been a part of Orlando way before I even came on the scene. Yeah. I just happened to be um, the guy running the other bar that every young comic came to for advice. Right, so right, that's right, pretty right. much how I got that name. But if, I, if it was anybody, it's Dean Napolitano. Yeah. yeah. You got to give it to the guinea him. out of yeah. everybody. Right, right. It goes to the Italian. Yeah. Right? We're I don't even know. Can thing. I say that word? Is yeah. that word racist? Well, guinea? Yeah. I think guinea's he all said right. It. Yeah, like you can say it. it. Like I, I didn't say it. Because I said it, you can say it. So keep that same energy later. No, no. We're going to stop that energy right now, dude. I don't want no problem. All right, man. That's the show, everybody. We appreciate you coming out. Dude. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. For whatever reason, I had it instilled into my head that you self-appointed yourself the no, Godfather no, of Orlando. No, man. Call me Godfather. I thought, you, I thought you walked in one day, just hit a door Bam. down like the Godfather with of Orlando the crown has and the cigar. <laughs> Dude, it's funny, man. When comics who don't know me meet me, they were like, "Yo, you are one of the most humblest people I ever met in my life." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a comic. Yeah, you know, I might, I'm a might be a touring headliner." But dog, I open mic before. Yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying. I've I've done everything. Every comic in Orlando. Yeah. I've done exactly what you did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 10, 15, 18 years ago. I, I've done it, bro. So now I would never give myself a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, though. You said that, uh, you said when comics meet you, they say, man, you're the most humble dude ever. That's a fact. But you are so, you are a little bit intimidating when you're a, a new comedian on the scene and not in a bad way. Maybe it's a respect thing. Because I remember be, when yeah. I first started, when you were around, I'm like, oh, man, Kim, Kim Miller's around. I got I to gotta make sure my jokes are straight. I got to make sure. I, and then you're like, what up, asshole? Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, damn, I didn't even yeah. say anything to you, bro. But, but that's another Another thing I'm learning about comedy is like, how old are you? Thirty-five. Oh, and how old? Thirty-four. Are you? Yeah, okay, so here. any comic under the age of thirty, I can't call them an asshole. Yeah, because they don't. Get <laughs> it. They can't. They're like, oh my god, he hates me. He's mean. But you guys, if I didn't call you an asshole, you'd be like, yeah. Ken doesn't like me. Yeah, right, right. Oh my god, he's not right, 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 right. talking. He said, hey, how are you? He, he like, hates yeah. me. He <laughs> hates me. He doesn't. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. That's another thing I'm learning is how to talk. To a younger generation of stand-up mm-hmm. comics, mm-hmm. compared How old are you, to Ken? I'm 46. Gotcha. But I'm also um, black, divorced, remarried, two kids. Um, so in black years, I'm 179 years old. That sounds <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm 179. I was 179. doing the math. But I like I met a young cat at open mic a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Brad, it could be 21, 22 years old, and he, you, it was like talking to a field mouse. He yeah, really, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna hurt you, B. I'm <laughs> no. just let's get you on stage. Yeah, the streets and, are talking, bro. But then I meet a comic who's 38 years old. Yo, 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 fuck you too. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, but yeah, fuck you too. Yeah, then I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, this is the conversation yeah, we can have. So yeah. that's how it should I, be. I, I got to learn when I meet people how to tiptoe around it. That when I started. 18 years ago, when Pedro Lima could come knock my drink out of my hand. Oh, yeah. I can't do that to yeah. a comic now because they just a different generation right. of yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Do so you find that with audiences too? Like you got to tiptoe more than we used to? Well, that's the thing. I don't really talk about anything super controversial. Sure. You know, I'm yeah. dad, husband, right. family, military. You know, that, I talk yeah. about that. There's nothing that I would. Uh, I cross the line with okay. to where the audience is gonna be like, yeah. oh, like do I, the worst thing of ever, has ever happened. I do a joke about giving my kids Benadryl, uh-huh. and um, uh-huh. this lady cries, is crying in the show. So crying she from said, laughter, yeah, or crying? no, no, hit it, crying hit because her kid yeah. died from a Benadryl overdose. I don't know this. Damn, yeah, that's crazy. And I get this long email what from this the lady. Odds? The odds. That's crazy. <laughs> that odds. audience member was at your show, bro. Bro, I get this email, and, and I feel bad because if you guys know me, know what happened with my son with the brain aneurysm. I, I never so heard. So my son had a brain aneurysm his senior year of high school. First okay. day of school, seven seizures. It legit died. Damn. Your son? First day of high school. 
and I and he had that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was like five, that six was years ago. Okay, yeah, right, right yeah, before we I right started. Right when we graduated yeah. high school. Yeah. And so I told him, I said, I get it. I said, I almost lost my son. I, I understand your pain. My, my oh, kid didn't die. Him. Almost lost. Yeah, he almost, yeah. yeah six, he spent two months in the hospital. Didn't know who he was. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And I told the lady, I understand where you're coming from. I, I've been there. I almost lost my child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, but ma'am. If you're taking parenting advice from a comedian, you're a <laughs> shitty ass parent. Right, right, right. right. You're a terrible yeah, parent. If you down, take dude. anything yeah. that I said on stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. for real, ma'am. Yeah. How did you expect this to go? Like, yeah, this is not a TED yeah, talk dude, with a PowerPoint right. with handouts after the show. But 100% audiences 100% truly think everything we're saying is legit. Yeah. yeah. They do not understand the concept of a setup. Punchline, embellishment. Yeah. They yeah, don't yeah. understand. Uh, Steve Harvey said the best joke is 90% truth, 10% embellishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand the embellishment. I've never given my kids Benadryl to sleep. Right. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Right. Never would. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but you but thought she, about it, and she, that's where the funny comes that's from. That's where the funny comes from. Because I'm starting from. to do stuff with newborns that's, as yeah. well. You thought you about thought, it. Dude, yeah. The joke I do about telling my daughter in the back seat when she keeps talking to me, and I tell her to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I say, I wish you shut the fuck up. Yeah, and her yeah, comeback yeah. is, you're not supposed to tell me a wish. It ain't going to come true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to tell her that because yeah. she was in the backseat yapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But did I tell her that? Right. No. Yeah, yeah. people are so dumb. That, you know you know what's wild? I get the opposite effect now. I've been doing so many shows, and when I do a little meet and greet afterwards at these resorts, these uh, older couples, they're like, they're like, yeah, so are you really married and have a daughter? I'm like, that would be a lot of writing yeah, involved. Right. Have something you have Neither of those things. <laughs> yeah, so you know, today I was, I, I got I'm going to make up a wife today. Yeah, a, whole, yeah. a whole life. So I got on the space shuttle and went to the moon today. <laughs> so you're really an astronaut, I huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't understand audience members yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they're the best. Sometimes they're just like, are you from here? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. so people believe a lot of stuff you say on stage. And yeah. I'm like, man, it's, it's not. It's not that real. serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, too, I don't know if you know your sign falling. Yeah, yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> I was afraid of it happen. It was either get it out. Yeah. This is gonna be a recording yeah. of the episode. All, yeah. all you no, I want to yeah. give us a super chat so that we can Wait. afford a new. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see it slowly go down as the <laughs> yeah. like. What's as the, the conversation big? dips, it goes <laughs> yeah. down, bro. So that'll let you know the hours oh, up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if you get a big laugh, it'll get right like rock hard. Keep telling me when that does that because you know it's a growing thing. That's funny. I want to back up. This is getting. Though. boring I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do want to back up man so you started 18 years ago 18 years you said ago you had some military background Nine you've years had Army, uh, yeah. a few different uh, uh thank you for your service thank by you the for way your service, brother. uh you've had different corporate jobs you're talking about you had the one then the next one one uh that's the same company when same you came company. back okay okay so i want to talk to you about what got you going in comedy and were you always splitting your time uh, got me going in comedy. I've always wanted to be a stand-up comic. Okay. When I was a kid, I was going to graduate high school. I was moving to New York, and I was going to yeah. be a stand-up. And my mama said, you going to the Army? And I said, yes, yes ma'am. Ma yeah. <laughs> and so I went to the Army for nine years. I actually did comedy once in the military, and it was terrible. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah, like and I'm, 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 uh, nah, we, so have uh, you ever seen the movie? Um, what is the movie? Love Jones. Mm -mm. Well, Love Jones is a movie. Black, jacket, black, 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 it's about a black. <laughs> it's a black couple who um, poetry type movies, okay. you know. And during that time, a lot of places would have like poetry night. Mm -hmm. You know, little um, tea and juice and uh, candles on the table, and you know, everybody's in like that. Mm -hmm. So they decided one night to do a poetry comedy, and I was the funny dude on base, right? Yeah. So I get there and, and I'm up there. Never wrote a joke, never did a joke. Mm -hmm. And I'm up there just doing what I do in the mess hall. And nobody's laughing. Yeah. I'm telling y'all this now. Camera, listen to me. Well, I, I was a kid. I didn't know any better. I ended up doing Chris Tucker's Def Jam routine. Damn. Damn. And it murdered, bro. Yeah. Because we were How repeating. Many minutes? How many minutes? Uh, I did five minutes. I did his whole set, his whole Def Jam set at the comedy, at the That's comedy club. Crazy. I'm 19. Yeah, I don't yeah. know no better. 19, 20 years sure, old. Sure, sure. So I You're did, like, this is easy. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, comedy's easy. Didn't do comedy again until 2006. Yeah. And so I was working at, at Nextel. So I worked for Nextel, Sprint, T-Mobile. They just bought each other out. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine, shout out to Mindy Smith, was like, hey, you are so funny. Do you ever thought about doing comedy? I said, my whole life. That's yeah. all I ever wanted to do. Yeah. She says, my friend Pedro Lima yeah. has an open mic in Altamont. I lived on Wildmore Road. It was two blocks down the street from my apartment. Love that. Mm -hmm. I drove what past this place, the Why Not Lounge. 
Okay. Bonkers Comedy Club. I drove there? by. No, it's not there anymore. Yeah. The hotel is still there, okay. but the club inside. Got you. I drove by this place every day for two years. Yeah. They I always saw existed. people coming out. And I was like, yo, I thought yeah. it was a nightclub. Because right, it's, right, right. it's no bonkers. It goes from a comedy right, yeah. to a nightclub. Right, 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 you never right. know it's comedy there. So I write this whole five minute bit, five minute set. And uh, 2006, November, never forget, I took a half day off work, was in my mirror with a brush, practicing, practicing. Practicing. Now you wrote these ones. I wrote all these. So it's what, all me. Yeah. So what went 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 uh, went from you doing someone else's act to knowing? Oh, I gotta write my own stuff now. Because I started studying comedy. Got it. Yeah. I, I didn't know the shit. The first rules yeah. now. When you're 19, you steal, just yeah. I just know deaf comedy. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, all. Yeah. I ain't know nothing else. I didn't know Seinfeld. I didn't know. Sure. You know, I just knew right. black comedy. Oh, George Carlin, Eddie yeah. Murphy, Richard Pryor. That's all I knew in comedy. Mm-hmm. So I actually started watching some comedy, reading comedy books. I'm, I'm, I'm I can I can do this, dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, I got up there and murdered. Yeah? Ooh. Five minutes? Man, because I brought, I brought 40 co-workers. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> and you That'll were talking about where they work? Bro, Pedro, <laughs> said, Pedro said, come back next week by yourself. Ooh. Bro, let me tell you something. Hiroshima Part 2. Yeah. <laughs> I bombed so bad. Yeah. And Pedro said. You had it coming, bro. Yeah, the first that, one was he amazing. He said this comedy. He Black said you, you knew yeah. you were going to work. And so every Tuesday, I was there mm-hmm. working it. And I was about three months in the game. I was featuring. Got yeah. it. Okay. Three months That's in it. the game. Bonk, was was bonk, featuring still 25-30? 25, 30. 25, 30. So I had 15 minutes of comedy, and I had 10 minutes of street jokes. Mm. So I was up there doing, you know, street jokes. Right. And then what happened was I ended up becoming the house MC at that club, mm-hmm. Why Not Lounge in Altamont, which is one of the was one of the best clubs in the city because the improv downtown had closed. And so every week I had a room of 350, 400 people. Wait, and wait, I, wait, a bonkers room was basically like an A club at that point? Bonkers for about a 10 year period was the best comedy um, clubs. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, they were like a third party. They, 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 they yeah, what you call a, a company with a bunch of businesses, with a bunch of affiliate? Um, franchise, franchise, mm. the best comedy franchise in mm. the state of Florida. Yeah, Damn. at that at, for ten years. Yeah, they had the Why Not Lounge, Daytona. They had a club at Universal, yep. uh, which is Catch a Rising told me Star. About that one. Yep. Yep. They had Ocala, which is my hands down my favorite comedy city in the state of Florida. Yeah, and um, then they had like corporate, like little corporate. They had downtown Orlando. Mm. Marcus was the Marcus had had it going on, wow. so I was the house MC. So they were because now Comedy Zone is basically like an, an A version of Bonkers. So they yeah, were better yeah, than Comedy yeah. Zone. Back they were better than Comedy. They were better than Improv. Wow. The Improv. The Improv in this area, in not this area. nationwide. No, in, in Florida. Florida. Got yeah, it. Okay. because the Improv Orlando closed. Yeah. So all you had to go down south. You had to go to West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Mm-hmm. But Bonkers had Central Florida on lock. Gotcha. Ooh. And if you were a good com, if you were a host. You were working 20 weekends. If you were a good feature, you were working 20 weekends. You were a good headliner, you were getting about eight to 10 weekends a year from Bonkers. Because they had so and many rooms, room. and they yeah. wanted to, and they keep turning and burning the audience Bruh. members so that you could bring that same act. Yeah, you bring that same act. Gotcha. And so that's how I built my set, being the house MC there. Three months, yeah, what, that's what, impressive. What to, years is this that the Orlando Club closed and Bonkers was taken I want to say the improv closed in maybe 08. Like and that's 08. the old Harry Buffalo. Space, yeah, the whole right? Harry Buffalo. It. It might okay. be 08 when they closed. And um, they didn't open again for like three or four years. They were three closed for like three or four okay. years. And that's when it opened where it's at now. Yeah, where it's at now. And so from 08 to, I'm going to say 2018, yeah. give or take maybe 2016, Bonkers was really that spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really was a, a great foundation for Orlando Commons. You can't go to any city. In the United States, that's not New York, L.A., Atlanta, Chicago, mm-hmm. a small market city, and work the way we worked yeah. with Bonkers. You're just not going to find that. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think Orlando has the best comedians in Florida. Yeah. Because we just have so much work, so much talent, so many places you can go to get better. Well, you can go to most cities. They got one club mm-hmm. and two mics. Right. Yeah. Where here, we had six clubs. And 15 mics. Right, right, You know right. what I'm saying? So you're yeah. getting up every night. You're able to yeah. work it a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they, and they were good crowds. Right. You know, when I ran the other bar, we I treated the other bar like a comedy club. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I heard the other bar before my time was that spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. treated it like a comedy club. You yeah. know, table talk to a minimum. 
I yeah. police the crowd. You could come in That's and heckle. That's how you got to do it. Yeah. You yeah. have to We've do got it. got treated way. like a Dress club. Dress for the job you want. Yeah. Kind of shit. Yeah, you, have to tra- yeah. you have to train the crowd. Because if you just yeah. a free-for-all, and, and it's going to be a thing. free-for-all. But it was Monday night. We, you, I called it LSD. Mm-hmm. Laugh, socialize, drink. Mm-hmm. And you laughed. After it was over, we cut a music. We had a, sometimes we had a DJ or we would play music. We would be in there dancing, drinking, to the point where I had to change my work schedule. Because I would be so hung Tuesday over morning? Tuesday, yeah. I had to say, look, man, I can't work on Tuesdays, dog. <laughs> and that's great. That's a Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> on a Monday night. Calling Monday his night, boss bro. like, I'm still messed up from the LSD. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> no, We had people with dress that's up. Funny. People would be there yeah. dressed up on Monday nights at that's the dope. bar. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, that's how I got my start. And But at the same time, you asked me, I was working, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I moved here in 04 when I got the military, and mm-hmm. I couldn't find a job. Mm-hmm. I do. I was doing door to door sales. But this is but you no job. But you're still doing comedy. No, I I didn't before start comedy. comedy. No, that's way gotcha. before comedy. Yeah, well, I, 2006 I was the start. Yeah, I, gotcha. I was two years two here years before prior. I started doing yeah. comedy. Gotcha. So I got hired at a, a company. I don't know if you young men have ever heard of it called Nextel. That's what, I, think, <laughs> I, I, I think that was the first company that had yeah, unlimited Nextel data. Chirp. Yeah, <laughs> didn't that the chirp too? Was that the chirp? Yeah, the chirp. Yeah, yeah. The chirp. I got hired at Nextel. Yeah, and it was same thing. It was. Three blocks from my house. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would leave to work. I worked at 7. I would leave at 6.55. Yeah. And was late every day. Yeah, How course. you late with your job right there, bro? <laughs> hey, hey, times be tough, And bro. I was there from 04. I just got laid off in um, two year, a year ago, year or two ago. Okay. But Sprint bought Nextel. Then T-Mobile bought Sprint. And then when T-Mobile came in, they was like, hey, you know, we don't need your department anymore. Because I started out on the cellular side, mm-hmm. and I left there, and I went net to internet networking, which yeah. is what I did in the military. Yeah. Okay. I got laid off on my 18-year anniversary oh. of my job. Was it downsizing? Typical corporate? Nah, T-Mobile just ain't stuff. shit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know that, what that, I mean? That's all corporate. When they bought our... So I'm on... They have two things. They call wireless and wireline. Now, mm-hmm. wireless, you know, is cell phones. Mm-hmm. Wireline is your internet and home. Mm-hmm. And if you go somewhere and they got a debit machine, that's called wireline. If you go to any company with their network, that's wireline. So we, And we managed all of that. Gotcha. So I'm that... I'm the... Hey, buddy, I'm that nerd that calls you. Yeah. So your laptop's not working. Let's see what I can do to fix it. Yeah. And when they <laughs> bought us, they're like, yeah, we're going to keep this department. You guys are a money maker. We... we we gonna keep y'all in two years after T-Mobile bought us on the anniversary of the day that they See bought ya. us. They was like, you know, we don't really need wireline. Yeah, yeah, wild. Yeah, and and then they gonna bring out them fucking five G internet bot. Man, fuck T-Mobile. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, I feel that. Yeah, we're, <laughs> hey, and that brings us to our sponsor, T-Mobile today. Everybody, uh, everyone here gets a free cell phone. Yeah, and, and our cell phone's apparently. listening. It's gonna fuck itself up. On <laughs> right, right. After we're gonna get so this. many T-Mobile apps at this. <laughs> well, dude, here's what I want to ask you. It sounds like you're a juggernaut at a young age. You're three months in. You're to build a feature set. So you know. I know comedy has changed over the years, but it couldn't have changed that much in terms of knowing we know how long it takes to build a five minute, 10 minute routine mm-hmm. and all the way to feature. So if you're three months in, you're featuring, you got the confidence, you got the jokes. Oh, no, no. It was terrible. But yeah. you but you had enough. I figured that out when he said 10 minutes of street jokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With all well, you still had fi- but three months in, you should have 15 minutes of material and enough confidence to hold yeah. off another 10 yeah, minutes of material. That so that's confidence. different. That's di- then it's still 90 days in where people are still figuring out how to just move the mic stand at three months in. Yeah. So my qu- my question for you, though, that's is so you're, three, you're three months in. You're doing very well. This is your dream, right? You said you've always mm-hmm. wanted to do comedy. Wanted to do this, yeah. You know, you had that gap, but you finally, you're doing it. You got that other job. Obviously, we all need money, but you didn't you ever think like, I got, I got to get this a full time go. I don't care if I eat a shit sandwich out of my car. This is it. This is my purpose in life. You didn't have those thoughts? Never. Really? Never. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. So when the first, I don't believe it. The first time, true shit. The first night I did comedy and I killed jokingly to my my best friend Angel. I said, "Dog, I'm quitting my job." Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm quitting my this job. This is Def Jam night, or this uh, is ra- the, nah, second this is the second time? No, this is the second time. My original okay. start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Def you, Jam you. is he dead. Goes, <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I'm quitting my job. Matter Look, of fact, you know how many actors I have hey, their material for right now? Look into the light, yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that didn't even happen. <laughs> this Men in Black. That didn't bro. happen. Men in um, Black. So your first time in Florida. And yeah. so when I went back that next week and I bombed, I was like, yeah, I think I stayed next to for a little bit. I might hang around a little bit. But after, so the feature thing, so I was featuring for Bonkers, and um, it wasn't good. Like, I go back and look at it now. To me, at the time, it was great. Yeah. But now, as a veteran, I'm like, oh. And so you're always going to be. Yeah. yeah. You're, yeah. Gonna you're your own worst So, But it's more to that story. I, I, 
they want me to move up the headliner. Yeah. Okay. Like early, early in my career. Yeah. And it, like a year it, in, we're talking. Yeah, it's bad. It's yeah. bad. It, it may be two, three years in. It's it's bad. You shouldn't be headlining at three years. It's yeah. bad. I'm supposed to do 45 minutes. I did 27 Damn. minutes. I this is me. I'm came in. Yeah, yeah. I don't even think I stopped to breathe. Yeah. It's too and nervous. Or? So then you get 27 minutes in. Then and I, what yeah. else? What I, else? Dude, what I else? get off. No, I, it, I got. Off, I got off stage. Oh yeah. yeah. The gym was like, "Hey, dog, <laughs> you got you got like 20 more minutes." Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Of what? <laughs> <laughs> got 20 no, more I minutes. don't. <laughs> Wait, you said good night, everybody, right, and then night. they said you got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I. The host went back up, and the host ended up doing like 20. It was a matter of fact, might have been Genesis. Oh, God rest it. Might have been Genesis. That's the dream. The host, but right. Genesis, anytime Genesis hosts, show, anytime yeah. Genesis hosts, God rest his soul. Genesis is gonna do 45 minutes up front and in the back, yeah. yeah. So you ain't gotta worry about <laughs> you that. Gotta like I got that. you, yeah, So yeah. I circled back, and that's when I started hosting and building my set. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm like, let me build it because now, now I'm learning more about mm -hmm. comedy. I'm going on the road with Pat Garrity, yeah, because I didn't know what I didn't know what a feature was. Mm -hmm. Pat Garrity said, Hey, I want to take you on the road, be my feature. I said, What's that? Yeah. Yeah. He said, you got to do 20 to 25 minutes of comedy. I said, oh, who's comedy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, yours. I said, I ain't got that. He says, bro, I seen you do two 15 different 15 minutes. I said, definitely. You definitely weren't watching me. Yeah. You was watching another black comic. It was right. not me. Yeah. And Garrity took me on the road. No lie, my first time featuring was yeah. Garrity. I had my whole set written on the back of my hand. Yeah, there you go. And Sharpie. Yeah. That's how go. nervous I was. Yeah. I was like, so who in here? <laughs> got kids. <laughs> the lady's like, "Is your jokes in your hand?" I was like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> she called it. She so, called yeah, it she could see it. Yeah. But um, as for the quitting part, no, I've never, never thought about leaving my job to do stand up. Because once I got into the game and started getting them checks, dude, I was recently divorced. Mm -hmm. I had two young kids. Mm -hmm. Man, I was um living in a studio apartment on Wildmore Road. I couldn't afford no family. Child support a mug when mm -hmm. you when I was working like if I was working I was paying a good amount in child support sure. I didn't couldn't quit my job to make for all y'all comedians watching what I made in two thousand six is the exact same they paying in twenty twenty four that's what I hear yeah. that's what I hear that's true. so I couldn't make it off that then yeah at all so I have never ever thought about quitting my job to do stand up full time not even now that the kids are grown no. Not even uh, the, the expenses had to have come down from that situation no, to where you're at now. It's way more. Like, dude, somebody invited me to come do a show in South Florida, mm -hmm. and it was okay, pay me four hundred dollars. Yeah, I said, bro, it's a hundred dollars in gas and tolls just to go down there. Yeah. Now, in in two thousand six, when gas was a dollar and fifty seven, a little different. I ain't mind riding down sure. there. You ten dollars gonna get me there. Now sure. it's forty five, fifty dollars to get me there and back. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So actually, the cost of living has went up. But right. the comedy has stayed, stayed the same right price. here. A flat rate. So I heard, unless you're it, a it has, unless you unless you selling tickets, mm -hmm. comedy for us normal role dudes, that money has been right here, and and inflation, it yeah. just keep a cost yeah. of housing, yeah. cost of gas, food. You know what I mean? Hell, some clubs don't even want to give you a meal nowadays. Well, I made it six weeks, dude. I'm going back to work. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> I'll right. still do the pod. Right, right, but, you right, know. right, right. Yeah. I, I think. Well, I gotta, yeah. I gotta dig. Though. I gotta dig. I gotta stop you real quick. I, I have to dig because. I don't know if I believe that. And I'm not saying you're lying, but I want to dig because if you made the exact same money, I don't know your finances, but exact same money you're making right now with the day job and comedy combined, just doing comedy, you would do comedy, correct? No. So you, if the money was there and you were selling If the it was the and... same money that you're making now, you say you enjoy oh, going Oh, so to... if I was making the, what I'm making now from both jobs, comedy job and, and the day comedy, but just doing comedy? Just comedy. Yes, that, so that okay, is okay. the dream. Yeah. That is the dream. Mm, Whether it, you want to admit it, the, that's no, the dream. Then. It was five years ago. What happened? I, Talk just, to I don't want to yeah. chase it anymore. Why? I'm tired. But I am exhausted. How many years doing it now? You 18, 18, years. 18 years. 18 years. Yeah. The role. I, I got to imagine you're tired. I, I'm telling you now, right now, how long you been doing this? Four years. Yeah. How long 11. You, okay. <laughs> you bright and bushy eyed. Bro. I get that. I tell him that. You bright and <laughs> I wait, tell him that. Wait till <laughs> you sit down. And you 18 years into this. Yeah. All the rejection, mm -hmm. the the road, the traveling, the the shitty pay, the damn, I can't even get some free chicken tenders. The booker's not paying you. you know the drama, like, the it, politics. It, it, yeah, it will, I feel that. It will be, finish my wine. It will, <laughs> right. it will beat you. And some people like, man, I love it. Yeah. 
I just Patrick Garrity. I just, Pat <laughs> Garrity, look, Pat yeah. gonna give him up. Well, I don't know. He he started the interview last week by saying before you were setting up, when you set up the cameras, he goes, Ooh. I said something about it, having said, all his that. weekends full, and he says something along the lines. He goes, No, nah, not all my weekends are full, and sometimes burgers don't get back to me. He goes, I don't want to keep living my life this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, as so a role comic, it beats you up. So I do feel that. I do feel that, but you gotta you gotta think we're not. NFL players, we're not basketball players. We're not going to catch an That's Achilles in the mid 30s. As long as you can stand, hell, you, as long as you can sit on a stool and talk, mm-hmm. you, you you still got another 30 years to this, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Physically, yeah. Mentally, no. Yeah, it's mentally. That's a mentally, it's a it's it beats you up. That's, that's why when I meet young Kyle, I love that in you. Yeah, I love that spark in you, man. I. Hang I don't got it. that no more, bro. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, no, I'm it's not, not a it bad is. thing because I'm still working sure. like crazy. I'm still 35, 40 weekends out of the year. Well, and, at that, <laughs> and you're right. And at that point, yeah. if you make that decision mentally, I got to imagine it makes life easier and more fun. Oh, you, enjo- you enjoy stand up because you know that that's not your ride or die. Like, I don't I don't need this. I yeah. can have fun yeah. when I show no, up. You know what makes me feel good? Yeah. When I could tell a book or no. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I just man, did that the other day and I felt great. I've done it once and it wasn't a real book. I'm like, I don't want I don't want to do that, bro. Yeah, yeah. Why not, man? I don't, I ain't trying to drive four hours, man. Yeah. $250. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. But you, like I said, you would have called me five, six years ago. I'm taking a day off. I'm using, I'm wasting a PTO day to sure. go make $250. Yeah. Yeah. When I could make triple that at work, just working with OT, chilling, and my job, having a good time. Do you think comedy is a young man's game? Nah, wow. it's anybody's game. So it's anyone's game? It's anyone's game. What was, so... It sounds. Have you ever thought about quitting realistically, like comedy? Oh, dog, you 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 just new friends with me. Yeah. Kid Miller has quit 50, 11 times. <laughs> what does quitting look like, though? Oh uh, uh, man, I'm done a with few, this. A, a two month height. Not hiatus. even that. Four hours. Okay, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm saying. Four hours. That's what I'm saying. I want to know a time where you, because it sounds like you've made peace for whatever reason, and I swear by the end of this episode, I'm gonna try to get you back on that horse, dog. Is you've made peace with this is my hobby. I love it. Yeah. This is the day job. Get pay the bills. I'm gonna do both, and it's fun. I will. And it's I, fun. I have never ever called comedy a hobby. It's never a hobby to me. Okay. It's second still, job. It's side not, not even second job. Side hustle. Not not a side hustle. So then what it's is just stand up. Stand up. Is what it is. It's stand up comedy, man. I don't. It's not a side hustle. It's not a second job. Okay. It's it's that. I mean, it. Most people don't even consider comedy a job. Yeah. You, you meet you most sh- people. You, you should. Tell, you most. <laughs> Bro, you meet most people and you tell them you're a comic. Well, what else you do? Yeah, they they don't. Pe- most people do not. Those think are the same the people who think you job. give Benadryl to a baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, those people are dumb. Bro, I'll <laughs> never forget when I first started getting paid with comedy. Um, my ex wife said, uh, "Please don't air this clip. Don't make this a clip." Yeah, <laughs> right, okay. She said, "It'll be a long way." <laughs> I, I I had I was supposed to be my weekend with the kids. Yeah, and I said, "Hey, I can't get the kids this weekend. I just got booked." And I was doing, uh, I had just started doing South Florida improvs. Gotcha. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know how you're doing it. You don't get paid. Damn. I had been getting paid for comedy for five years now. Yeah. yeah. She she thought I had been doing comedy for free <laughs> for five years. She thought Damn. this was fantasy She baseball. thought I was just she going to do a, stand-up. She thought this was a book club. Yeah. <laughs> I said, and I was going to work with Paul Moon. Like, I was going to work with a big-name comic. Yeah. I said, you think I would go to Miami, like South Florida, the, for free? I said, yeah. I actually, she really thought I wasn't getting paid doing it. Yeah. People don't think that this is a job. Yeah. Right? They don't think, because you don't clock in and clock out. Mm-hmm. Right? They People don't feel that way about it. I think up. it's a little different now, though. What it seems like. It seems like people, because of the, the boom of the internet and social media and being able to literally. I still yeah. don't think they think it's a job. I think they the may right think do. it's a hobby type. Yeah, like yeah. People, I think true fans do. Right. But your average person that comes to see you at sure. a comedy show, I don't think they really think like, man, this dude, he he, he paying taxes and he a good <laughs> yeah, model yeah. citizen. Like, <laughs> because this how I know people don't really think it's a job. It's a, it's somebody sitting in the audience right now saying, I can do that shit. Those yeah. Are- but I, I have, love when I, they go to uh, figure that out. Well, that's what killed comedy when there was a boom, from what I read. So there's a comedy boom, right? And everyone's like, oh, I can do that. And then they let in all this terrible comedy. Audience members came. It was cringy. And then in the, when comedy was going like this, then all the clubs went out of business because they were booking terrible comedians. I'm going mm-hmm. to tell you another thing. That's another misconception. Yeah. Comedy ain't never been killed, bro. 
It never been killed. It's never no, been but killed. it was it was spiking to where I heard you used to be able to live off of feature pay in the eighties. Yeah, because it's the eighties. Yeah, yeah. Man, well, you can, so you can live so off just, they, minimum wage was five dollars. Yeah, so and just, people were living well. So it's just when the mo- the money catches up with inflation. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. That's that's okay, 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 Comedy's okay. never been comedy. That's one of the one of the true art forms is never gonna go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Now the pay always gonna be terrible until you make it. Until yeah. you get famous and you yeah. can sell some tickets. Comedy is never gonna die. People yeah. love com- people love stand. We saw that how much uh, after the pandemic, how people, how, how flooded the scene was, how flooded the really, nation was. That go was somewhere and tell them your stand up, yeah. and you get a whole different. What you do it's comedy? Interesting. It's interesting. You get a people see you. I, I man, I tell everybody I'm a comic. Mm-hmm. I I know comedians who don't do that. If I if I'm in a conversation with you. I will find some way to slip in that I'm I'm a motherfucking yeah. stand-up comedian. You got to, because it tells so much about who you are as a person. And they always yeah. see you differently. And they're going to have a... Their, their demeanor is going to change. They could be uptight. And you say, yeah, I do stand-up comedy. And you can see Get the relaxing them. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Man, you know comedian Slappy Foot? Yeah. Never met him. <laughs> Never slappy met him in my foot. life. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. 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 I got all his DVDs, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. I got his yeah. records, bro. Yeah, people love, people <laughs> love comedians, foot. bro. People yeah, yeah. love us, man. Yeah. Come on, who can, who can do this? Yeah. It, it, Donald Evans says something on, we had Donald Evans on Real Last other day. He said something that touched me. He said, this shit ain't supposed to work. Think about that. You, microphone, light, bar stool, drink maybe, and 350 strangers. Mm-hmm. That's it. And you get the motherfuckers to, hey, this ain't supposed to work. Yeah. And I really thought about that. I said, damn, Donald, you're right. This yeah. is not supposed to work. You, you sound it's different set up from singing. If I got up there and sing, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I got up there and say, hey, man, so I was with my daughter today selling Girl Scout cookies. They're like, who the fuck is this right. guy? <laughs> what, what am I yeah. And then you, Yeah, right? And <laughs> then next thing you know, and I'm like, it's not, it's not supposed to work. It essentially works like magic. <laughs> It's amazing. It's kind of like, a parallel it's, to magic. It's, a, it's fucking. A, it's, so a, many it's, cra- the it's one yeah. of the craziest. Thing. I tell you why. I man, to get on stage to make a group of people laugh of strangers. Yeah. That what's there's nothing harder than comedy. Right. But we also one of the the least respected genres of entertainment because people feel they can come to the show and do whatever the fuck they want to do during your show. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen anywhere However, you don't get to stop your play and go, hey, shut the fuck fuck up, up, dude. (laughs) I will come down there. (laughs) Nobody's ever heckled cats. That's that's an interesting statement. And a cat's going... (laughs) Someone going going to Hamilton like, I don't remember the story being like this. A January 6th (laughs) Wait a a minute. Wait a minute. Where the fuck was Hamilton Black? Right, yeah, so you know we're going to get a black Captain America. Just standing up saying yeah, that, bro. I'm telling you, nothing, like, no, like you don't go to, like, a poetry slam and then just start yelling at the poet. Yeah. But for some Your reason. Your dad didn't touch you. Yo, right? Yeah. You know, here she go up here again with this positive black shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That's so true. But but comedy, it's like people get a little alcohol in them. Even, I've been done shows with no alcohol in somebody hell because I'm like, right. wow. Insane. So, so you're just like that. I'm just like, Sober heckling. That's, that's a low that that's I've never why seen. Anybody out there, I'm going to pitch this show to you. Yeah. Ooh, it's called Reverse Heckle. That, mm-hmm. I just threw that name in there. Okay. Where if you heckle me, I get to come to your job. I want it. And fucking yell you on the phone. Hey, thanks for God and Freedom Mortgage. Ah, this bitch can't close alone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the coffee stain on her khakis. Yeah, yeah. You suck a beat. Yeah. yeah, how you gonna close Yo. anything with them pants? Motherfucker don't even know how to make the burger right. Look at this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want, I would love to be able because I'm like, nobody, I, I don't, you know, the old hacky. That'd be a funny sketch. Job. I don't come to the job and kick the dicks out your mouth. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, it would be dope if I got to come and fucking yeah, heckle yeah. you at your job and yeah. shit, yo. Like, like you do us and then you ain't even gotta be a bad you gonna be a really good comic mm-hmm. and it's gonna be somebody like i do them but i despise bar shows yeah yeah if there's a bar in the back i know it's about to be it's oh, it's bro. a good chance it's, these they about to be assholes yeah, yeah. and and sure. every time i walk and i see a bar it's gonna i say it's gonna be one of them nights yep. yeah it's gonna be one and when i get through them if they're a good show i'm like thank you god sometimes yeah, you, they can be fired <laughs> but sometimes it's like, like why oh, did i doing? come here why do you guys have comedy yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah why do you even want to comedy they still night? got the you turn the tvs on, on? no Dude, okay they got oh. they got the little spotify machine playing music Yo. like yeah. we could have just stayed home yeah. people playing pool like i say this a lot with people now that I'm seasoned, I've been doing this a while. 
people be like, hey, I want to do comedy. I said, let me come see your venue first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I come see the venue on the night where people are there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this ain't comedy. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. these people want to play pool. They want to drink. They want to throw dark. Yeah, we should have a comedy night. I said, you are making a big mistake. Mm -hmm. So you want to stop this mm -hmm. of what they've been doing in your bar for 10, 15, 20 years. Right. All right, here you go. Yeah. Give it up for comedian Slappy Foot. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, just, I don't know why slappy I love Slappy Foot. Slappy Foot's on tour right now, bro. And, and now I'm up there, and the guy yeah. who's playing pool, like, when the fuck we start comedy? Yeah. You yeah, know, because yeah. they're not yeah. used to that. You right. know what I mean? Like, so people want to, I don't know what it is that people think comedy is <laughs> going to save I, their club. I did, a, I did a show at the same situation with the pool in the background. Uh -huh. I, you had to time your punchlines <laughs> when they were hitting the ball, Cut. bro. Yeah. <laughs> you had to make sure you <laughs> saved it. It sounded like the drum roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know we all know place, but yeah, I've never thought about quitting going full time yeah because i don't like i don't like to struggle do you enjoy yeah. corporate america yes i actually enjoy working because I, I, sorry, enjoy, <laughs> I, I enjoy my job uh, the reality yeah, i feel like i know you um, even less <laughs> no. like you enjoy corporate america and the dream was never okay. to be have the ken miller godfather but, but the dream was to do stand up full time it really was in my early days i think you got to go by slappy foot but then, yeah comedian slappy foot or, 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 or i used my, my, ur my urban wouldn't. comedy name was country black Oh uh, yeah, yeah, country black man. Yeah, I was gonna write this whole comedy, uh, urban comedy CD, and it's called it's gonna be called Random Nigga Shit. Yeah, and that, yeah. <laughs> that was gonna be the yeah. name of it. I'll bleep the N word out. Yeah. Right? Be, yeah. You're trying to buy the album. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nick, <laughs> Nick, stop saying that word, bro. I yeah. told you about that during the show. Continue. Dude, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. cut to me while he says it. <laughs> yeah, right. Random. <laughs> like whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I do. In the beginning, yeah, but once I start working. Family man, and also two. How old are the kids right now? I'm sorry to cut Junior you off. 24, baby girl, she 18. Okay, mm. both out the house? Um, Hell no. Okay. They ain't going nowhere. Oh, 2024. Yeah. Free rent. Yeah, they ain't, they ain't going nowhere, stack, man. They live with their mom. Stack bread. They live with okay. their mom still, but if, it yeah. is, but if you ask me, they live with me according to my jokes. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> right, right. But I, one thing I've always tell comics the biggest mix, misconception or one of the biggest lies told in stand up is that you have to struggle to be a stand up. Mm. It's not true. They've pushed that narrative for years. If you ain't, you got to be out there sleeping yeah. in your car and eating dry ramen noodles with no water. And, and, Even 7-Eleven got a microwave, yeah. bro. <laughs> I'm like, that's one of the biggest misconceptions in stand-up. That's yeah. that 80s comedy shit where, mm -hmm. you know, they lived, they, they slept in their car. Steve Harvey was homeless, you know. Yeah. You don't. And you, and you were 15 minutes away from a sitcom. Yeah, at any yeah, moment. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> now it's not like that. You can live, you can work and still do stand-up. So yeah. Comedy ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. The money ain't changing. Mm -hmm. Everything's the same. Most, right. I, most comics in this city got a day job. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and they're idea. doing 25, 30 weekends a year. Yeah, no, 100%. No, I think you're right. I think that was the whole idea that we were talking about why this show made sense because there's so many people that are splitting their time. And I was right. talking to Nick about this when we first started. We first started this as a solo podcast. We were just going to talk back and forth about corporate America, following mm -hmm. the dream, the, you know, pe reason People it's my companies. brother. Like he ain't never had a job. Before. Yeah, <laughs> fact. He just came from the closet. He was kicking right there. He just pops out when my guests come. Really? Yeah, like, calling my dad for money takes yeah. work. All right, dude. I got to mentally prep for that. But think of it. Think of it this way. This is what I was telling him, and I truly believe this. Any any job you've ever done, it's forty hours minimum, right? If it's a full time job, True. forty turns into sixty when you're talking about commute, overtime, all that fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I always say if you put a third of that twenty hours. 20 hour, twenty yeah. dedicated hours with no outside noise, outside pressures. Now, granted, people's financial situations are different, um, but and you just focus on whatever that is, not even stand-up, a musician, an artist, uh, you want to build an app, whatever it is, 20 dedicated hours a week. In 10 years, you're going to be make, you're going to be profitable if you if you're consistent. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like Seinfeld consistent. You're going to be just as profitable as you were working a, a nine to five, because nine to fives has such low ceilings. Yeah. You understand? Uh, that's how. That's the way I look at it. So I mean, everyone's situation is different. Oh, everyone's goals are different. I get it. Four years I get in. it. The I spark in the it. eye. I understand I had that. that spark too, brother. No, no, I, I get that. But it's like, how much more successful could anyone be if they weren't do, if they weren't splitting their time? Even if you kind of like the day job, which we found some people actually do still like their day job when mm. they come on the show. But the people, especially the people who don't like the day job, and that's messing up with their mental. How much more successful would you be? And anything, if you didn't split the time, like look at a small example of working out. What if you had no job, no responsibilities? All you had to do was stay in tip top shape. 
you're going to be working out oh, three times a day. Buff. You're going to be eating the perfect meals. Everything is everything in your life is focused around being a Greek god warrior chiseled, right? Mm. You're going to be chiseled because you have no outside noise. Now, trying to get that same type of chiseled when you got two kids, a wife, a day job, and you're following comedy at the end, what falls first? Probably the gym. Yeah. So that's the way I look at it is like if you def- – now, you granted, you said that your goal has changed, but if the goal is – X, you gotta the the only variables that is gonna be how much time you put towards it. That's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. If you if you met me ten years ago, I'd probably be on that same what yeah. you're saying now. Mm-hmm. What really beat me up was I got laid off right after eighteen years. Yeah. So I said I'm gonna do comedy full time, mm-hmm. and I did it for a year, and it broke me. Damn. I'm talking about Duh. mentally. I'm in the middle of that one year. <laughs> emotionally. It broke me. Was like it I'm because the yeah. finances not finances, being where they needed to be. I wasn't. I was. I was still getting crazy. Like I was booked like crazy. Sure, yeah. sure you're always booked. And you got like, merch. I'm just like, yo, this shit. Which, not, what was different about that one year doing a full time than splitting the hairs? Besides money, was my, it only money? My, only money. Okay. Only money. That's it. Just the money. You know. Once everything got all said and done, excuse me. I'm, I I throw this out here. On a good year, I was making with comedy and my job. And this is without my wife. This is just me. About $95,000 a year, right? Sure. And that's before taxes. Okay. You know, take your taxes, child support, all that shit. Sure. Then when me and I got married, me and my wife together, we were upper middle class. Yeah. But then we both decided, let's chase our dreams. I want to do real estate. I'm going to do open the company. I said, well, I'm going to do comedy. Mm. And that money got cut like 85%. You were living off the nest egg. Yeah. When you guys were going all in the yeah. dream. But you were still working, though. No, no, all in the dream. I was fired. I got laid off. Oh, that the year, this past this year. year. Oh, that year. Yeah, okay. This is that year. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And after that year, bro, I tell people to this day, and they don't believe me, not going back to work when I got laid off was the biggest mistake I've ever made. Because it put you Damn. back financially. Bro, like you terrible. burned through your nest egg. I'm still trying to get up out of that hole. Gotcha. Wow. I'm still it was the biggest mistake I've ever made. I should have went no now yeah, the Grim Reaper. I should have went right now, back okay? to, I should have <laughs> at least went because I got a big lump sum for my job when I got laid off. Nice and I used that to live off of. Yeah. Like to end the Duke. How many months severance? Um six. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I got two months paid. Respectable. And then I got a six months of you gotta think I got eighteen years. It, it was like two weeks every for year, every year. Yeah, something like year. that. And yeah. then like an extra thousand dollars because I was one of the first people to get laid off. Sure. So I was like, okay, I can do this. And after like six months, I was like, I got to go back to work. Yeah. Because my expenses from what I was bringing in were way up here. Did you do Did you do a little cost analysis before you started? Jump of, right into of it. what the bills look like? Jump right into it. You didn't it. even put it down? Didn't okay. even think about it. I was just like, I can do this. Because yeah. I had a month of comedy. I had made $9,000 one month. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, month. if this, yeah, Easy oh, this about squeezy. to be. Then that next month, then that next light. month, I made $800. Yeah. Okay, well, I can live off of, sure. but then the next month, I made like three grand. Right. You yeah. know, like my expenses is $6,000 a month. Yeah. Damn. So I have to make seven grand every month right. to make it. And I'm just throwing a number out there. I have to make this amount every month to make sure I make it. I was like, I'm not going, this ain't going to last. Yeah. yeah. So I was about 10 months into it. I said, man, I'm just going to go back to work. So I got a job at a place called Lumen Technologies. I was there for about a month. And then my homeboy um, over at Granite Technologies was like, hey, man, everybody from T-Mobile over here. Mm. Oh, okay. You want to come work they with us? They plucked y'all off. Gotcha. I was like, yeah. And so my partner got me hired over there. So I pretty much worked with half of my team that oh, I spent yeah. 18 years with. At Dope. my last job. So you got a little bit of work reporting. So you yeah, know, that's why everybody in there. there now. Yes, yeah. I'm there now. Okay. I've been there for six months now. Okay, cool. I've been there for six months. Did you, Ooh. I know it's I know it's cliche, uh, work smarter, not harder, but of that year, because granted, you were kind of doing the boots on ground old-fashioned mm-hmm. way, still driving to the gigs. I mean, you, you've seen comedy change before your eyes with oh, the internet. Oh, 100%, bro. Have, have, you th- have you thought in that year, did you think about trying to build anything from an online presence, whether it's funny little videos or sh- trying yeah, to get I monetized should've. or I an should've. idea for a show nah, yeah, or no. different streams of revenue that's not just like the brick and mortar, here's my $300 and merch. Dude, I'm one of those, after the fact, I'm like, Ken, oh, man, you wasted that time. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to start off with buying a house. I got out the military, and the house is in 2005, $110,000. Mm-hmm. $155,000. Yeah. Beautiful. Brand, so far, brand new <laughs> yeah. brand new houses. Br- killing, brand new houses built, from, us, bro. built from the ground <laughs> up, right? I got my VA loan. I said, I ain't buying no motherfucking house. 
I don't, oh, I don't want to take it. I'm going to live in an oh. apartment, so I ain't got to do this, that, and that. Yeah. Fast forward, what is this, 2016, 2017, Yeesh. I finally buy a house. That house originally was a hundred thousand dollars. I bought it for two two thousand two hundred and eighteen thousand. That's that's probably like three fifty, you know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Right now, my yeah. house is almost four hundred thousand yeah. dollars. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So now let's back it up. Come to the comedy. Yeah. Right at the time when COVID hit, it was fresh off of the Steve Harvey win. COVID hits. I'm doing my car rants. They're doing okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I stopped doing? Hmm. The fucking car rants. Yep. Why? Why? I just do. I was like, man, fuck social media. You didn't enjoy it? No, I love it. I've not loved that yeah. shit. I just, I was like, man, if I do this social media, I'm old, old, old ass comic. Mm, I'm an mm. old comic. Gotcha. So I don't need no social media. Yeah. What happens? Ben Brainer blows up. Bang. Uh, uh, buddy to move to New York. Jeff, Jeff. Wright. Yep. Like, yep. Like, like Chris Roth went, Chris went, I blew up. Um, um, Clark, not Clark, Rika. Yeah. Like all these cats who were doing, doing videos Internet out stuff. doing, the, um, the pandemic, and I'm like, this shit's stupid. Yeah, yeah. and they were pri- in a prime position a because pri- everyone was everybody at was at home, home looking at their phone all day. Yeah. So yes, I kicked myself in the ass for not. So then I we get back to work, we back working, and I get laid off, and I was working with a comic, um, David Nehill, um, the the Irish yeah, he kid. Was, yeah, he was just very recently sold you know, out of third. You know, David blew up. Yeah, yeah. He said, "Can I posted a comedy video every day for thirty straight days?" Yeah. That's all I did so for 30 days. I didn't post nothing. I hate hearing that story because if I we've done that yeah, before done that. Yeah. and it don't work for everybody, so, I'm like, bro, I want I need this to work. So, so if people are me. making videos about that now where they're like, here's what happened after I posted every day right, for right, 100 right, days, right? right. So nothing. <laughs> I, I promised him, and um, because I don't, I want to post some newer stuff. My the I, man, my joke, my kids are 24 and I'm still talking about two, two fairy shit, yeah, yeah. And so I told him, I said, I'll make a deal with you. I said, I'm working on a new hour now. Um, and I said, I will then start that 30. I want recently, to, I, yeah. recently, this is yeah, recent. this is re- I just worked with him last year, so I've got to get into, so that's, that's the goal. That's my goal for to, like, to, no, okay, to now write a new somewhere. hour, even though like I've been in this, I've been in this funk, but com- me and comedy got a bad relationship. We are very, abusive. anything that you love, we're good abusive. enough, we're very, yeah. me and comedy, very abusive to each other. We, we beat the shit out of each other, yeah, because just two months ago, I was done, yeah, yeah. Like, again, yeah. Chris, I, Chris, I tell Chris Alexander calls me Ric Flair. He yeah. said, motherfucker, you retire all <laughs> yeah. the fucking time. Yeah, yeah. And he walked into the podcast like, woo! I was, I was done with it. And I'm going to tell you who got me back. Hmm. Jay Clark? Ash Cash. Ash, Ash Cash. Cash. Will Shout Mill, out. Ash Cash, what, Will Mills, and Jari. Yeah? Just hanging out with him. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. A good comic Just, hanging, just hanging out with him. And I'm laughing. And, and I throw Dwayne, Chris, and Marvin in there, too. That little group of, that little core of comedians. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I can't leave these motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Cause I in, in the beginning when I quit, guess who came along? Hmm. Preacher Lawson, Justin Lawson, and Akeem. Mm-hmm. I said, I can't quit this. Mm-hmm. Look at my, my dogs. Fine. Yeah. Then I get in that funk again. I met Funny Bone Open Mike. That's that Mike. military in you. That's that comrade. I need some camaraderie. Yeah, mm-hmm. Can't leave him behind. I met Open Mike. I even told Ash Cast this story a couple weeks ago. I said, it was Ash Cast, it was, it was Will Mills, it was Jari, it was me, Dwayne. And we just outside, Chris, and we just clowning. I'm talking about, I, I had a headache. I was laughing so yeah. hard. Yeah. And I said, why the fuck would I leave this? Yeah. yeah. I was like, I just needed some more young motherfuckers to be like, man, get your ass up. Yeah. So now I'm doing this show called All For The Money with Jeff Kaufman, um, James John, and Miguel Colon. And we have to write a brand new 10 minutes every month. Mm, you damn. cannot do any old material. Oh, it's like a live show. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a, a live um, comedy show. it's a live comedy show. It's also where you can the audience wins money. So they got topics. We joke on them topics. And, and it's a monthly show. Yeah, and gotcha. then he brings you up. And then it's bam, you got to do your ten minutes. Mm-hmm. And I've how, done how t- brand new? Like you never even worked it at a mic. Never. Your first time ever doing it. Th- I don't go to mic. Yeah, so yeah. That's, me, that's that is my, that's a mic exactly is, what you need. A mic yeah. is my when I'm on the road on the weekend. Yeah, Those sure. are my okay. mics. So I wrote. Two D, t- bro. Okay, the first month I did not. I had like eight new, eight old minutes and two new minutes. This mm-hmm. month I actually did ten new minutes. That's perfect. And I didn't practice. I do. I had it. I had it on cue cards. Yeah. <laughs> and I just had that shit right there. Like so. Anyway, 
did it because I had the joke yeah. in my head already. Sure, 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 sure. And so that's kind of gave me a little bit of little bit you know a little, little bit of spark right there. But dude, but then in six months, Jay got my like, man, fuck comedy again. I yeah. bet <laughs> it's a it's a tough game. And, it's and a there's tough nothing game. we can say because just because of the seniority you have, there's nothing sure. we can say frustrations we've had that you haven't already had. But the one thing I'm glad David Nihil uh, told you his story in that 30 days or whatever, and it's getting you to think of putting your hour out. I would, even without the new hour, if you got your hour filmed well, you go to somewhere like Laugh Out Lounge where you don't have to pay a bunch of money to get there, you take down the sign, you get a good uh, few cameras, and it's shot really well. Production I don't values like the there. Owner, LOL, so. Okay, we'll talk about I'm that. So I, was like, I was like, <laughs> like thank God. Like, like, nah, this, nah, this, <laughs> this, 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 this ain't the Drink Tea podcast, man. Yeah. This is an inspiration. Nah, podcast. nah, Mike Lee, my babe. I love him. We're going to bring him out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah walk me in right now, right here. <laughs> so I heard you don't like me. This yeah. show's got a little taste of Maury, too. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I love Mike Lee. That's my dude. He, like, he, we did our last episode at his club, so we're going to have to edit that out. Nah, put it up. He know. I just worked this club last month. That's funny. Favorite club. Uh, I'll be there May 3rd, May 4th. I was about to be like, me too. Uh, Um, (laughs) Um, But even if you put that hour there, my biggest thing from what I'm seeing from my perspective right now, if the production value is there, clearly the jokes are there. You've been doing this act for 18 years. I've seen it. It, it's, It's undeniably funny. Put it out there with the high production value. If it pops, it pops. It's like now you have to write yeah. some new jokes. Even you could still use the classics if it pops because they're going to love you for that. Yeah, because if you don't but, do the classics, they'll kill you. If I don't do Bag of Flower, I will get lynched. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So you don't even need to wait until you got this new material to put it out. I think your goal right now should be fine if whatever your the the finance uh, look like to get the production value there mm-hmm. but get all that stacked up get it shot pristine i'm talking dry bear quality like you can get certain p- camera crews that'll make it look like uh, dry bar or uh, don't tell like that very high quality you put it out there on YouTube or whatever platform you want, then you cut it up in the 30 to 60 second reels. Now you can do one comedy clip for 60 days. Worst case scenario, worst case scenario, you don't pop. So now you still have that same hour you can tour with. Um, and then you just got to wait to recoup some of your funds on yeah, the production true. value for shooting it. Yeah. You don't need to wait for that next hour. The Pe- game has changed. Right. People act like you're burning material every time you post a clip. You're not. Not if a thousand oh. people saw it. Nah. That's not burning. Even, <laughs> even if 10 million people saw a clip, yeah, yeah with, it with, ain't with, even the burning the material for me. It's just I'm tired of doing it. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and like we just said, man, everything about that is a hustle. Getting those clips together, getting that special film just to yeah. chop it up and post yeah. it every yeah. day. Yeah, so it's all that's a hustle. that's a that's a something in my in my mind. I've been thinking about doing. Yeah, yeah. don't. So. I would say don't think. Write it down. I'm a firm believer. I don't know how you do goals. If it's yeah, written do down, goals. it exists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> write it down. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. I encourage you I, to I write wanted, it down. I wanted, my wife's one of them. This is my vision board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, ma- do it, man. Well, maybe, nah, you try, you might that. not have to cut out a little magazine I do it every clippings. year because yeah. I'm scared of my wife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 edit that one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought you loved our vision boards. I do, I do. Jake made me say it. He wanted some. Jake might be bright eyed and bushy tailed, but he's got he's got some insight. He's got some good ideas. He he does motivate people. But dude, but no, seriously, I love that about when I meet younger kind I yeah. love that cuz I was there I get it yeah. you know what I'm saying but I also let them know don't let my bitterness yeah. and where I'm at right now affect you and I love that you don't you were like well I'm gonna still do what I'm gonna do right I tell comments hey Ken what's your fuck I hate it today yeah yeah and then I see that <laughs> I comic it. like I'm like no 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 I hate it today yeah, it yeah. got nothing to do with you, yeah, yeah. you feel it your like feelings. nothing to do like what's your favorite food Jake Probably a burrito. I fucking hate burritos. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to still eat burritos, right? Yeah. You're not yeah. going to stop eating because yeah. I can't I stand them. I got one in the freezer right yeah, now. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So that's why I try to tell you in Just because today yeah. I'm on my fuck comedy day right. don't mean don't mean you should be on that. Yeah, yeah. we you feel know that. What I'm saying? Yeah, I tell them that all the time. My, my also, too, I ask comments, why why this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I am curious that every time I meet a new comic, when I, do, oh, I host Open Mic at Funny Bone, it's ten new comedians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why? You, it's got to be something a little bit wrong with you up there. Oh, sure. sure, there should be. Why this? And the, <laughs> my, f- <laughs> the funniest one I ever got. This dude said, "I just like to talk." Get that this. was it. Go to a therapist. <laughs> he, he, he bombed. Of course, he bombed. 
These are just but like got, the top. got to talk for five dudes minutes. Dudes like, yeah, hey, just, man, I've always wanted to do comedy. One yeah. dude's like, man, I'm just trying to get away from my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, is you, you know, when somebody asks me, I was like, dude, I've, this is the only thing I've ever wanted to do my whole life. Mm-hmm. That's why I keep digging. Because I know, I, I I know for life. a fact right now, if I could tangibly give you something that said, Ken Miller tour million dollars a year. You're taking it in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. So it's how do we all get there, yeah. right? That's the whole idea we did this podcast. Well, that's yeah. what we're what doing. Can we post? Right now. Yeah, we're trying to pop. So I I think man, I mean we're not even at the end. How far are we are? Well, we're, we're we're coming up on the end actually. Yeah. Uh, we're very we're we're there. We're at the end. Uh, which I kind of want to bring up a question to you. Ken's 18 years in. I'm about half that W. Does yeah. this give you any kind of like, all right, maybe I shouldn't be so hardcore on the never going back to work in some capacity? Because it, it's a long road. This it, isn't it a do- sprint. It, it doesn't. And, and, and the reason good, why good. it doesn't. And, 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 and the forefront of my mind is always going to be protect my, my, my child and my wife. Make yeah. sure that we're not living on the streets. Sure. But beyond that, um, yeah, I spent so much time in the corporate world and, and building a nest egg. And, you know, a 401k for a rainy day for like bottom of the barrel, the dream starts slipping through yeah, the bottom. Yeah. So obviously that's the, you know, the the, the escape plan. That's the break uh, in case of emergency. Button. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the reason it, the reason it doesn't the way I don't want this to sound cocky. Let it. But the reason it doesn't bother me is because. I think the reason you asked earlier why, you know, there's a reason people do stand up. Yeah. It's something wrong with people. What I find is and most of the comedians I vibe with, they've battled through some type of adversity in their life. They've mm-hmm. gone through something that was less than ideal, probably at a younger age, and for whatever reason, they've comedy found them or some type of art. So I look at it like if the wor- if my worst possible scenario is living paycheck to paycheck, living tight, going on cheap vacations, driving a Toyota for the rest of my life and eating shit sandwiches as long as the wife and the daughter are taken care of, that's still making it in my eyes. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the th- is it that that's the floor. And that's tainable. But the ceiling, I look at comedy, it's a lottery ticket that Damn, you I can like control. That. It's yeah. it's it's a lottery ticket you can control because you you don't know when the internet's going to choose you. You don't know when you're going to go viral. You don't know when you're going to pop. Yeah. But the reason it's a, it's a lottery ticket you can control, you're not just putting numbers and praying. Right. You're 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 you like this thing we sucked when we first started this, but now oh, yeah. we learn how to edit a little better and we learn how to get that a little better. The lighting yeah, yeah. and the questions yeah, yeah. asked the guest and stand up obviously you see that every year you're like, "Whoa, I used to suck." Bro, I used to suck. <laughs> right, right, yeah, corporate mumbo you, Jumbo. You said something that I, I tell every comic. What, your success is your success. Yeah. So if you're on the road 40 weekends out of the year and you've only made $41,000 and you feel that successful, well, God damn it, bro, you are successful. Sure. Okay. You don't have to be Kevin Hart to be a successful sure. comic. Sure. And, and I had this, the only reason I use Kevin Hart as an example, I love Kevin. Um, I did a show in um, Snappers in uh, Palm Harbor. Mm-hmm. And this was right at the right COVID when people were, you know, coming back to clubs. And I wasn't allowed to take pictures with people. My wife said, you can't take a picture with anybody. So it was a lady there. She was black. Mm-hmm. It was her birthday. Yeah. And I took a picture with her. Okay. And another lady was there. I said, ma'am, I'm not allowed to take pictures. She said, well, you took a picture with that lady. I said, yeah, because black lives matter. <laughs> it was, wait, it was a white lady? Yeah, white lady. <laughs> joking. I'm joking. Yeah. She just watched this whole show. So I said, man... Let me just take pictures with these people. So I yeah, took yeah. pictures with everybody. Now my wife's gonna see this is gonna be mad. And I didn't take a picture with this lady. This lady sent me a fucking email. <laughs> I don't know what it is with white she women in emails. Sent you an email. I'm racist and I'm never gonna be shit but a Florida <laughs> comic and and I never be Kevin Hart and this and that. So I had replied back. I said, "Ma'am, I'm a very successful comic." At the yeah. time, I was on my way to go do Syracuse, Albany, Columbus. I was doing the funny bone run right sure. after that. Hell yeah. I sent her my, I said, ma'am, this is my schedule. I said, if you would have stuck around, you would have noticed as a comic, I was joking. I ended up taking pictures with everybody that was there. You left because you couldn't take the fucking joke. Yeah. You left. I said, I took pictures with everybody, but ma'am, I'm actually a very successful person. Yeah. They think because you're just a Florida guy. Oh, yeah, you ain't, you ain't, yeah. who don't nobody know you? Yeah. But, right. but if you consider your success, my family's taken care of. I'm working. It might be check the check. That's the ceiling, though. I mean, no, I'm sorry. That's the floor. Yeah. But I like that. I don't see that. It, I don't see. I mean, that that is the floor of success. Right. So but, if all but you else still fails, see there's some success. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? You see, that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of comics see 
social media and a million views and think, oh, I got to get there. Mm -hmm. But that one of those comments that got a million views may only have 10 weekends booked. Sure. Right. But yeah. you got 42 weekends booked and you're doing what that. Now, you want the viral. You want the viral. Yeah. I love a viral video. Sure. But I'm also in the club every weekend. Yeah. I'm yeah. also booked every I got a flyer with every date on it. And yeah. then you go look at that person. They may not have they may not have a date till 100%. June. 100%. Sure. That's 100%. But, but, you, but you, and I'm just not saying you, but but a young comic sees that and like, oh, well, I want to be that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be me yeah. because my video got 300 views. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I'm I got 42 weekends. Yeah. 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 I've never used the phrase the floor talking about comedy, which yeah. is weird that I haven't because when I wanted to leave teaching and chase this, I started oh, looking not at not another teacher. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you ever heard of bored teachers? Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> take me, Devin, please. Uh, Devin. Oh, that's my dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Good. It, yeah, yeah. Give him buddy. a little nudge for me, would you? That's uh, my buddy, anyway, uh, I always looked at like uh, the ceiling for teaching is nothing, uh, but the ceiling for comedy, you know, it, you got to get lucky and you got to work hard, but it could be really friggin' high. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The ceiling. So the, uh, the ceiling of uh, teaching is is a principal, and we yeah, all yeah. know what happens <laughs> to those guys. <laughs> they all get fired. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. They, they, they got to take the blame. <laughs> the ship goes not, down. Not, starting hey, with you them. say now, not now. The ceiling for teachers is to be on the board comedians too. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I got to get on I this like tour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knew I was training for the perfect opportunity all this time? Yeah. Funny. But no, I like that because the floor for a successful comic, based on your own definition of success, is attainable with the hustle. Yeah. And it sounds fluffy. It always sounds fluffy. Sure. Man, if I could just make a living out of doing this. But that's not my goal. My goal is to be, and I'm putting it out there, my goal is to be a touring headliner. I can sell yeah. out any club, yeah. any theater. Yeah. I think Freddie Mercury I, of comedy. Facts. <laughs> I, thi I think the arena, I think the arena, <laughs> Arena stuff is like. Have you ever seen a comedy show in arena? Yeah, it's a I weird hate, experience. I it's weird. It. So I'm gonna put my dream at the top of theaters, and yeah. that, that's the that's the dream. But trying to get there, if I'm still just a Florida comic, I get a couple of weekends in different states a year, and I still got the resort gigs where I got right. consistent money coming in. Yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can flip the bill for for the house and the food. Then th that's, that's the floor. I love that. Yeah, and 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 then your, let, and your counterparts coming. see you know, like, man, how you do this? Yeah, right. And and you can sit down with a new young up and come and come be like, yo, man. So this is what I did, and like, that, I've said this, man. I always thought if I never got famous off of this, you know, I don't know what y'all believe in. I, I believe in God, and I always tell my wife, I said, well, maybe I'm was here to teach. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm here to mentor because a lot of people out of mentor are doing really damn good right now. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So even if nothing happens for me, and you know me and you kick it for a couple years, and next thing I know, you on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. For sure. I'm. That's another thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't take credit for anybody. Like people always say, man, preacher wouldn't be. No, preacher was always funny. I just took preacher on the road with me to give him stage time to sure. get better. Sure. Right. Preacher will tell you, he says, I it, there's not enough money in the world I can give Ken for what he did for me. Sure. You know what I mean? So I mean, I've always had, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've always had that mentality when it comes to comedy. Well, you know, I've the whole Godfather thing. We can mm -hmm. circle back to Godfather. Yeah, yeah. That I actually love giving you comedy nuggets. Sure. And giving you comedy advice more than I actually love performing stand up. Yeah. Yo, and if that's the goal, see, then now we're getting somewhere. Then. So I actually like doing that. So you got but I won't goals, teach maybe. a class, though. Yeah. I won't teach. I teach a class, but you won't pay me for it. Yeah. Okay. I would never yeah, yeah. take you're a against, comedian's you're against, money. You're against Say more about that. Class. You know how much, you know, any comic could tell you how you pay me. Yeah. A glass of Crown Royal. Yeah, there you and good. you can sit down. I'm a red one. Brown. You'll yeah. sit in red I'm a barefoot red. <laughs> yeah, and you'll sit down with me. Any comic could tell you. Come yeah. up, me. Hey, Ken, I got a drink. I got a question for you. Yeah, and I would talk comedy. Man, you mean time Chris Alexander done sat in front of my house? Yeah, and we done smoked cigars and drank, yeah. and we done just rewrote jokes. Yeah, okay. Dwayne, or, uh, calm, yeah, all the time. Send like, me that address whenever you. All the time. <laughs> yeah. No white people. Um, yeah. um, Does Jake count? <laughs> I, I don't know what I this motherfucker is, bro. <laughs> bro, dude, it's, the, the, you, now, I don't know if you ever heard the bed. You maybe heard the bed. I don't do it as much at the shows, but it's a true story. When I was 16 years old, when I grew up, my brother's white, like Snowflake, like Barnes & Noble, Backstreet Boys white. Mom, I love Barnes & Noble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mom, super white. I always was olive skin, a little tanner, and I always, mom, I never had a dad, never met him. I always asked my mom, Mom, what, what am I? I don't look like y'all. And then there's my half-brother and different dads. She's like, yeah, I don't know. He was just, he was darker skin. I mean, tan. He was tan. And told me that my entire life. And then one time I walk into the kitchen. My brother's sitting at the kitchen table with my mother. And he goes, you got to tell him. 
I'm like, tell <laughs> me, tell, tell <laughs> me what I, I'm gay. <laughs> like what? Like, <laughs> no, she's like, you got to tell him. And I sat down and she goes, you know how you always ask that, uh, you know, what your father is? I'm like, yeah. She goes, uh, he was actually uh, black. But I was like, huh? Like, and like, you never met him. Never. And now it's time for the reveal. Ken, <laughs> embrace your son. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> hey. That is son. And that's why I invited you here today, <laughs> man. Which this is crazy because I, I, I got some pussy at 10. <laughs> And this episode is going to be called Father. You, you said you did uh, Columbus, Ohio on yeah, that tour, didn't hey, you? Hey, yeah. Well, it's Cleveland, but close enough. So you've never met him? Never met him. Never met him. And my mom told me that when I was 16. So I was like, damn, that's crazy. It was a good... I remember the joke now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And I walked in the next day because I was on the basketball team. All my friends, they were black. And it was an easy transition. That's all true. But I'm, the joke part was talking about like, uh, you know, like I'm like, yo, we can do anything now that, that, that I found out I'm half black. I'm one of y'all. We can start a band. We get we shoot hoops. Yeah. We get into all types of shenanigans. And like, <laughs> first of all, black <laughs> folks don't say shenanigans, yeah. bro. <laughs> and I was like, all right, my bad. I'm gonna go skedaddle. I got a lot. I got a lot to figure out with this black shit. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But though, that's that. I mean, that's my story. Like, can I confirm it? I never met him, so now technically I could do a DNA test. But uh, but yeah, so I that means I get a pass. I know we about to go off tangent. If yeah. you don't want that, ain't ever. When I was younger, it meant a lot to me when I was younger. Cause especially not having kids, health yeah. reasons, like you know. When we looked it up, so when my brother had to, uh, uh, my mom passed when I was sixteen, and then my brother had to uh, be a legal guardian. So then when we went through that process, you, you had to find out uh, any parents still alive. When they ran his name through the system, he was in prison, and then so you know his name though, Calvin McPherson. If Dang. you're out there, <laughs> you owe me some child support. And when I'm famous, you're not getting shit. No, just, just bring kidding. four friends to the show because yeah. it's a five person version. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you got to buy two drinks. I got I, I got to show hey, third and fourth, hey, but you you got you you hey, you got to pay hey, four friends. It's a two drink minimum, you're gonna be bro. Like, uh, <laughs> reparations, dog. You got right, to gotta get two drinks too, bro. You're gonna be the Ricky Bobby. Yeah. You you leave two tickets for your dad at every comedy show. Let's you never come close. Yeah, you ain't first to last. You like you watch Ali Sadiq. Yeah, yeah, I, I like Ali Sadiq. He does the story about how his father left him when he was young. Yeah. And when he got older, he took care of his father. Oh. Like he's paid his Poetic. bills, paid his debts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. And it, I, I watched it, and it was so crazy because, like, me and my father had a crazy, fucked up relationship because my father lived up the street from me, mm -hmm. and I barely saw him. Mm. And didn't become a good with me till I had kids. Mm, yeah. This motherfucker was an amazing grandfather. So weird. And my kids like, granddad, like, no, fuck that. Yeah, that ain't yeah, the same yeah, dude, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And then once he got shit. old and got cancer, bro, I went to North Carolina and I spent like a month in North Carolina, you know, just taking care of my dad. Mm. And I let it go. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know. Things bro, happen. Yeah. See, I reconnected yeah. with my dad at the right time. Now I kind of have to help him when he gets old. Because right. my dad left when I was a kid and we reconnected later in life and I ended up working for so, him. So, so now I owe him. So that's our whole, that's so our comedy story right there. We, so we already have an episode called Daddy. Yeah, yeah. This is part two. Daddy we we had another two. person on and we saw the same thing. Like, yeah. my dad ain't shit. My dad ain't shit. Yeah. My dad ain't shit too. Yeah, Ruth was talking about, yeah. she hasn't talked to her dad in eight years, but her dad's asking to come see her show now. Yeah, and that just led to the whole daddy yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Once he see that show, he ain't definitely coming. Back. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's gonna be yeah. another eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you get at least a feature. I'm Rue. I love, I love Rue. her too. Yeah. Yeah. She's been featuring for Nick. For the but, oh my God, we should get Rue's dad to come to my headline show, <laughs> and we might go viral. We'll tell uh, her after. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad was in the audience that whole time. Yeah, we Imagine need to do a poll of all the comics whose fathers around. Right. Who, which one of you guys still had you? Because I already be over. Because I already know Lee, Dwayne and Chris' daddy was yeah. shit. It's so. got to be over fifty percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's part part of the reason I know dad here. was Carmen Malone. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I knew Carmen's dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love Carmen's dad. Yeah, he had a he had a nice little. Yeah, I love Carmen's yeah. dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I would love. Yeah, it's a lot of comments. That, that daddy. goes back to your question of like, if there's a weird, messed up reason why people choose this yeah. life, and yeah, there's man. usually some type of adversity that connects you uh, to the core. Like, oh, yeah. you're a comedian. Yeah. You already know you're gonna mine be cool. Was, mine was being picked on as a kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My mother died when I was five. And um, I was adopted by my aunt. So that's why I have 10 brothers and sisters. Some of them are my cousins. Gotcha. My, my, my aunt raised all of gotcha. us, so I call her mama. But I used to get made fun of. I'm a skinny kid, big ass teeth. Me and my brother shared clothes. So what got me into comedy was I had to get you before you got me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to snap. That's why I'm really good at snapping on people. Mm -hmm. I had to get you before you got me. <laughs> and I needed to be accepted. I got this. Uh, my brother wore the shirt yesterday. I got it on today. So I got to make people laugh to not notice that 
You know what I mean? Yeah. We, he, my, yeah. Did your brother wear that shirt yesterday? Yeah. Nah, yeah. son. So anyway, I was milking this. You know what yeah. Like, yeah. You know, so I did the same. That's how I. That's how yeah. I became funny. I, yeah. I looked back at high school for that reason because I couldn't fight, and so my thing was like, if someone's gonna beat me up, I'm gonna fucking hurt their feelings first. Yeah, so yeah. I, I gotta to kill you first. Them. Oh, and I started thinking back like a couple years ago. I was looking back and I was like. I was the bully. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. realize hey, it. Hey, dude, this is true shit. Me and, du- me, and Dwayne, yeah. me and Dwayne Williams were talking, right? And um, and I was making fun of somebody. And I said, you know, my daughter is kind of a loner. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. she doesn't really mess with people like yeah. that. Um, and she's kind of to herself. And I was like, man, she's to herself, man. I said, well, she got friends, but she's into like Dungeons and Dragons and mm-hmm. all this mm-hmm. nerdy shit. And oh. I said, she's 18. I said, that's because I made fun of all them nerds in high school. Yeah. And God gave me a nerd, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God gave oh, me a smart-ass kid yeah. that I made fun of in, yeah. in high school, bro. I bet you I bet you found some interest in some of the stuff oh, she likes, Oh, man. Though. I was, yeah. Opened up your world. Nah, bro. I ain't going to tell y'all that on camera. <laughs> He's like, y'all business, yo. Yeah, me yeah, and my yeah, daughter. A, yeah. Yeah. a Charizard card falls yeah. out of his pocket. I ain't out there listening. <laughs> that ain't mine, dude. Yeah, that ain't me. Holographic, son. Holographic. Yeah, I ain't out there listening to K-pop. Never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man. Um so we are not gonna have advice for Ken. So how we how we wanna I do got uh, advice. I do, I do. Um I do got advice. Uh take it take it for, job. take it for what it's worth. Uh obviously no, no, you 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 you're eighteen years in, you've even had a year stint where you technically quit your job, you got laid off, but you had a, a year focus yeah. where you were chasing it. Looking back, sounds like you could have did things a little bit differently yeah. in terms of the work smarter, harder, but that's life. My dude, my my biggest advice right now for you, even though you said you're happy with the situation, mm-hmm. but I got you, I got you to admit if you were making the same money, uh, just doing stand up as you were with the day job plus stand up on the side mm-hmm. right now, you would say yes, hundred percent. Then that's yeah. what I'm saying. I, I I encourage you. I I strongly urge you to write this down tonight. Ken's comedy special, whatever you want to call it, and put a date next to it. It's the same way with stand up. When you know you got a date and you got to get your jokes together, you're not going to look like a fool. Mm-hmm. Put a date together and start researching it, man. Get a really high, uh, the the whatever money you can pay for, high production shot special. Yeah. Put it on whatever platform. Shop it if you want. There's local put people here there. that can help yeah. do that, and they would. Chop it up and put it out there and see what happens. Because there's no. What's the worst that can happen? You're in mm-hmm. the exact same situation. Maybe you invested a little bit of money in it. Mm-hmm. That'd be my biggest goal for and you, then bro. And it motivates you to get that next hour. Yeah. Out, yeah. You know? There's, so. no, there's, n- there's, n- there's, n- your jokes are so perfect because you've been doing them for 18 years. There, you might add a new tag here or there, but it's so ready. Yeah, you gotta put it out. Do you not have three specials? That's what I was gonna you say. have three comedy specials. Three, yeah, um, I have a 30 minute where in my house on the DVD. I used to sell them. My my third year I came. My first one was called uh, "Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself." It's thirty minutes. My second one was "Taking the Crown." Mm-hmm. I recorded it downtown at Crown Plaza mm-hmm. back when I first started drinking Crown. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And my last one is called "My Life and Kids." You never chopped how, it up. How long were those two? Um, the first one was thirty. Yeah. Then the last two were an hour each. Okay. Both, all different material. Mm, um, thirty yes. The second one is. The f- the last two the first the, it's half and half sure. so like thirty minutes of new and thirty minutes of old and this sure. one is thirty minutes of new and thirty minutes of old. Are you okay. still proud of that material? Nah. Okay. Yeah. Nah. Well, then I go because you grow. Sure. Right. You grow. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like Mark Vieira was would post his older clips. I don't know. I know it's older because he has hair. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and they would the people love they would kill but they were funny 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 bits. Mm-hmm. I go back and look at them. I'm like, I've grown way too much for that. Sure, for me to yeah. post. Yeah, but, but yeah, I was do. I was cleaning out my garage. I was like, damn, I totally forgot about these things. Yeah, yeah. All right. so yeah, I got See, I got three yeah. specials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you already got the experience, and you yeah. already, you've already done it. You've had the yeah. lights where you got to be perfect for a night. Uh, oh, I had to wear the same outfit two nights in a row, bro. Yeah, yeah. Got to that is uh, together. Yeah. Oh, you got to see how the big it was a triple X button up. It's huge. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna send you a picture of it. it's fucking. It's huge. I was downtown crying, oh, yeah. but the bonker sign behind me falling. It's the bonker sign's falling off the wall, bro. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's That's and funny. the dude that taped it. It's like, oh, uh, it's like a close up of me. It's all a like, like nobody. Yeah. You barely see my body in there. It's, uh, it's just one, one, camera? one camera. One camera. Okay. Yeah. One okay. camera. And, well, the one I did, Eddie Sass did my last one at Improv. 
And that one was two cameras. <laughs> Answer my message, Eddie Sass. Oh, I'm yeah, he, out here, dog. He's, yeah, he's terrible. <laughs> yeah, he's terrible at replying yeah. to comedians. I, I felt like I'm finally getting my feet planted here. And then the first, like, five clubs everyone talked about, I was like, I haven't been to any of these. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. haven't done Bonkers. Loser. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the new guy in town. Yeah. But that's it, man. It, it's very cool, simple. Cool. I think I think that's. I think you should, yeah, let's you get should that. strongly consider not doing it, but, like, a hundred percent doing it. All right, man. I'll Why not? Advice. I'm Why gonna not? write it down. Why not? Yeah. But in a year, if it don't work, yeah, I got you. I'll pay you. Your bills. Your <laughs> nah, I'm gonna go find your dad and bring him to the show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's cool, man. Calvin Mc. Is it Calvin? See, see he's rich. Yeah, yeah. Calvin McPherson. Calvin McPherson. <laughs> if he fresh out of prison, yo, he, he hid that drug money. Yeah. That's that's yeah. Jake's white side being like, you probably know him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, any drug dealer went to jail in the 80s, yeah, yo. They, you guys all, they you guys hid know that money. Each oh, we know other, everybody, right? bro. Yeah. We know everybody. Jake's like, I only know half. That's the like black comedy. People. I'm telling you, bro. I'll be like, I'm a comedian. So you haven't met Eddie Murphy? Yeah. Yes, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done like 10 From shows with Eddie. Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, I love that. Yeah. Oh, what you got, right. man? No, I, th- I, I ain't giving Ken advice, man. I'm trying to learn from his year because everything you were talking about, I'm, uh, what, three months in, four months into trying to do this full time? And. I we'll think see we're further. We started this back in July, no? Well, I, I was staying August? on the payroll oh, yeah, till yeah, yeah, about yeah. Uh, about October, yeah. So yeah, that's another thing, crazy thing about stand up. You've been doing this eleven years. Eleven mm-hmm. years, yeah. And, and I, I think quit. I've only met you twice. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, he's I a did, Boston I moved, comic. I came from Boston to Jupiter. Okay. About two I was years like, ago. when you say yeah. like eleven years, yeah. I'm like, and I just moved to Central Florida right. like six yeah. months ago. So you got the list, the club list. Oh yeah, you said I sent it to you. Okay. I think, see, if we have, we've only met once in person for like two minutes, but we've had Facebook conversations. Yeah, so we do talk on Facebook. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm a name on the internet. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know? uh, Which I've appreciated. Anytime, right. brother. I appreciated the help. Any Anytime. final words, man? What would you t- What would you tell the listeners? We call yeah. them quitters. No, so. fuck the listeners. What would you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> looking back at your year and what you Selfishly. wish you did differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what we should do differently. Learning from your mistakes. I've, the same thing I tell every comic. Your journey is not my journey. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna use this as an example for all you comics, and I've told you this before. You got four comics. Okay. Comic one, comic A, B, C, and D. Mm-hmm. Comic A blows up on social media. He's traveling around the world doing stand up. Comic B, he's been doing this shit for 20 years. Just a regular road comic. Comic C, 10 years in, the worst motherfucker you ever seen in your life. <laughs> but somehow it gets worse. Yeah. But somehow it gets worse. Comic D, hey man, I'm just doing this every now and then. And every last one of them, that's their path to stand up. Mm-hmm. My path isn't your path. Sure. So in 20 years, I might be the next guy. Mm-hmm. But it might take me 30. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It might take you four years. Mm-hmm. It right. might take you two. It might yeah. take you 17. Don't look at what another motherfucker's doing and oh, let yeah. that define your comedy career. Can't. Great advice. And and when you start doing that, you know, I've had I just had a conversation with a comic who was pissed because somebody that he thinks he's funnier than is working more than him. Oh, he, already, and I said, already behind the I said you already, you've already fucked yeah. up. Mm-hmm. You, if the funniest if, people aren't doing stand-up anyway. I so. said, first of all, you mad at him because the club booked him. Yeah. yeah, You're not mad at the club. Yep. you mad at that. Co- oh, hey, I can't stand that motherfucker. Why? He booked. Okay. What that got to do with? Bro. So for all There's your comments out so there. There's so much of that going your on. Your career is your, focus on your mm-hmm. career and mm-hmm. not worry about that motherfucker in front of you. And I promise you, if you do that, man, you a blink, it'll be 10 years in the comedy. You'll be headlining. You'll be touring. You, I, I feel like I started comedy six months ago. Yeah. Hell yeah. 18 years. Like, I really can smell the Why Not Lounge. Right. <laughs> like, I really, I, can, I really see myself walking in. The automatic doors open up for the hotel. I open that do- black bar door and I go to the back and Pedro Ian and Pat Garrity and them are in the back. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's up, motherfucker? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go get us a drink. Yeah. All right, what, yeah. y'all, what y'all drinking tonight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I can still yeah. remember and see those nights, bro. Because yeah. you were hazed, it yeah. turned into your oh, memory. <laughs> yeah, can't haze nobody now. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I, I can still remember certain club. Like I can, you can say, man. Um, you know, club, the Chuckle Hut. Yeah, I was there 2017, Friday, November 17th. Man, it was like 17 people there. Yeah. But, dog, it was a good show. Yeah. Like, yeah. I still you can remember, remember every all yeah. that that stuff, bro. Oh, and, yeah. and, and, and stuff. but the reason I can remember that is com- I haven't been jaded and I haven't been bitter towards comedy because of something somebody else got. It's comedians out there right now doing way better than me. Mm-hmm. And I tear their ass up on stage. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. guess what I do? Mm. Hey, dog, I'm proud of you, boy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, man, I'm proud of you because mm-hmm. their journey is not my journey. Mm-hmm. Right? 
focus on your journey, man. You're going to be good. Hell yeah. yeah. You're gonna love that, good. man. We're gonna and I do love day, you, Twitter, so I'm sorry I took away your advice. But we I get, feel like everyone can follow that advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, we can end it there. We shouldn't say anything. That's yeah, that, that, yeah. that's how we're going to live by right yeah. there. Ken Miller, everybody. Daddy, me, daddy issues point two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're out there, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, we're going to shut know. these cameras off before we kiss his rings. Right. I might need some money. Okay, yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for having me, brothers. Anytime, man.